Welcome to SelfDiscoveryWisdom.com, formerly known as Self Discovery Media. On these podcasts, you're going to hear people who speak from the heart. They've taken the journey in life. Many things have happened to them, but they've changed it to happening for them. And in their strength, their courage, they've discovered their abilities and their wisdom, and they are now sharing it here with you. Do enjoy each show. We bring it to you with love and knowing that it's going to help you on your journey of life. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. My wonderful guest today is Howard Gershman. I've been interviewed by him, which we're going to be talking about that show a little bit, and uh, it will be coming out soon. It was really a delight to be on his network. But today we're going to be talking about something that's changed his life, Prime America, Prime America. What is it? Well, he says, picture this, a regular middle class guy good job, nice family. He made some money, bought houses, sent his kids to college, a life that many people would aspire to. But his finances were a mess and he didn't even know it. He relied on people he trusted to give him advice about what he should do with his money. When he got, uh, what he got was insurance that was totally wrong for him. But instead uh, of making money with investments, he lost thousands. I hear that. What's worse, <laughs> these guys who he trusted and whom he thought were looking out for him earned huge commissions, but not him. That was um, Howard's past life, but not where he is today. Fortunately, through Prime America, he discovered the way finances are supposed to work, what he is supposed to do with his money. He switched everything around, and now he is in a much better place. With 19 years of experience, Howard shares that knowledge with others. As a result, he has helped over 300 clients all over the country, turned 13 clients with massive debts to be on track to 100,000 or million in uh, requirement uh, retirement accounts, set up five families to send their children to college without huge loans, and focusing on putting a place and programs and prevented unexpected disasters like death from turning into a financial Ruin. In short, he disrupts the way people think about their finances, and he's eager to help you and the people to do the same. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, finances are always something that is, if you're a financial person, you get it. But if you're not, and you're just trying to juggle your money and make ends meet, and especially in a world today that is, uh, <laughs> seems to be taking more money than giving, it is, it's, you know, it, there's a reason why people get gray and anxious very, very early in life. So, <laughs> you know, uh, you've been there, you know what it's like, right? You're doing all the right things, but then somebody comes up with a great deal. This will make you money and you go, God, sounds good. Let's go and do it. And next thing you know, I've got a hole in my pocket. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Welcome to the show, Howard. So. Yeah. Changing your life around it at any age is wonderful, but like I think it's even more poignant when you're doing it like midlife, because you really do understand the journey and the impact of changing your life around. And it's really important at that time. We, we get a lot of opportunities when we're young, we jump into them, but we don't always understand the significance of it. When you've been through the hard struggles on the roller coaster, and then you truly see an opportunity and you immerse yourself into it and you see the benefits, it's got a whole different bell to it, hasn't it? It sure, it sure does. And it's when you, I think you had it sort of right there, when you've experienced the pain and figured it out or figured out what not to do, right? Ooh. What to do and what not to do. Um, yeah, that's when it really sticks and it really makes sense. Mm. Mm. Making sense of money. <laughs> you know, we all laugh at that one. <laughs> Everybody's trying to make sense out of money. That's right. And, that's right. But it, it's... As you said, when you get onto the right track, I think the biggest thing that everybody would love to have is not having to worry about money, whether there's enough or, you know, are you making the right decision? Is it something that's going to cost your family or cost you or is it going to be something that's going to benefit you? And then not knowing what you don't know, right? Right, exactly. I had a fun conversation, which this reminds me, I had a well, I'm going to say a fun conversation yeah, um, during last week um, uh, with a new a new friend. We were with, I was, my wife and I were with uh, uh, a few people who we didn't know. We got to know them really well during during last week. Um, but one guy we ta started talking about. I mean, we, everybody tells kind of what they do. Um, I talk about you know being a financial advisor, and 
we go on and on and on and on. And then he talked about um, buying lottery tickets. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't remember how the conversation kind of wound around exactly. But I said, you know, by the way, yeah, as a financial advisor, you know, lottery tickets is the craziest thing you could ever do, right? <laughs> um, but he said, yeah, but it sort of might happen, right? And it might be away from this whole bill on path. And I said, yeah, yeah you, you can get hit by lightning a dozen times before you'll win the lottery. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and so it was very funny the way that the whole thing came out. And it reminds me of, he was, I mean, he's a very nice guy, very smart. And his wife is also very smart too. The, um, the, it, it could have reminded me of talking to a four-year-old, you know, where mm. you can't rationalize with an irrational person, right? And that's sort of what I was trying to do. And he was going down the irrational route. And, uh, and I said, okay, well, I said, here's the way it works. Here's the way I sort of talk about those kinds of this kind of uh, conversation is that, you know, I make suggestions and you make decisions and mm-hmm. you make decisions that honor you and your life and whatever you want to do. And there you go. So that's the way I would, we sort of left it. And, and, you know, very often it's seeding. Yeah. Right? You know, we don't, don't ever underestimate how much seeding an idea or seeding a thought is in there. And then as a person, you know, goes down that road and go, you know what? I keep hearing this particular name. Or I keep hearing about this system. There must be a reason why I keep hearing it. You know, maybe I should start paying attention yeah, yeah, and yeah, go yeah. back to the person that told me about it in the first place, because yes, now yes. I think I'm beginning to get an idea. Not, a, I mean, me and money, I mean, or money and I, as the correct English way of saying it is, is that, you know, we have a tumultuous relationship. You know, I know how to spend it. <laughs> it is, uh, it's always iffy on the making of it. But, why does that happen? You, well, that is crazy, right? Why, why can't it be the other way around? I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I mean, but, you know, money is energy and it's exchange of energy yes. and it just happens to be done in a currency type way. And I think that what happens is that we look at money through the eyes of burden or anxiety, right? We never have enough right. or, uh, it's, you know, unexpected expenditures come up or we're always chasing the money or, you know, in, in a lot in society, people are defined by how much money they make and that this is my status. No, no, that's just what's in your bank account. It's not your status, right? Mm-hmm. And it never should be. It's not who you are. It's just what you've made. But we have this tumultuous relationship with money. And I think very often the paths are there in order to make it if we're ready to receive. It is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we often talk about in some of the uh, the workshops that I do in front of groups, groups, you know, I just, I would start off in sort of in this, in this way, not exactly, but more or less to say, looking at everybody and says, so when I say the word money, What's the first thing that comes to mind? And you see people grimace, they go, eh, you know, what, what, right? And you see they've got the that other kind of mentality around money where money is a problem for them, you know? Um, or evil. Or evil. Yeah, yes. exactly, yes. exactly. One of the stories I even tell in the workshops is, have you heard, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, right? And that's like a thing <laughs> that goes along. And, you, and then, then I say, okay, talk to my friend who owns an apple orchard. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> His money literally grows on trees, right? right? All perspective, right? It, it absolutely it is. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, we, you know, this thing about money being evil, uh, money is just a currency, folks. Currency, yep. It's just a currency. It's just an energy exchange. How money is used and in what way defines whether it's good or bad, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And we have plenty of people in the world that are using it in the wrong way. Right. Wars, manipulation, domination, Uh, extermination you know all of that that is the person that's using the currency in the wrong way it's the same as i said of people chasing money as being their own importance you should be enriched and abundant within your heart soul spirit and character right that will attract the 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 currency rather than defining yourself with that and i think what we have to look at before we can embrace anything is what is your relationship with money? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that that's really is down to it, isn't it? What is our relationship with money? And we're in a state of lack. We will always be in lack. 
And yeah, and I talk about that in some relationship, you know, kind of a mindset. You know, mm -hmm. how do you kind of think about money in that way? And we even say, if you think um, in, in a more specific way, I'll say it's, you know, if you think you're going to be in debt for the rest of your life, you will be. Mm -hmm. And if you think you'll be out of debt and have plenty of money in the future, or, then you will. I mean, it's really, it's not a, it, it, it sounds odd maybe to people who are in that lack mindset how could this possibly happen but like like even we said earlier mm -hmm. it, it, it's really you put it out to the universe and it happens yes yeah. yes we talked about it when i was on your show about um you know everything is energy and everything energy. and energy is measured by numbers so everything is numbers right mm -hmm. and um and it is the energy that you put out that what you feed will grow and if we, if our feeling is, I don't have enough, the universe will give us not enough because the universe is going by feelings. So it's going, if I feel abundant and enriched, then it will enrich your life in every way. And you'll always have enough. There'll always be money there. But how do we translate what the universe, you know, is that added story of somebody on a roof waiting for rescue. God's going to rescue me. And on comes a boat, along comes a plane, along comes oh, everything. No, I'm no, waiting no, for God. As it bubble, bubble, bubble goes down. <laughs> God, and God says, to him, why didn't you take all the people I sent you, <laughs> right? Um, it is, is pay attention. You know, when you know that, okay, I want to manifest money. And then suddenly you meet someone like you, right? And it's like, this is, you know, the manifestation is that yeah. here you are, Howard, with a solution. So go, no, 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 I'm waiting for someone else. No, no, no. Yeah. This, this is what's being put in front of you right now. Yeah. Pay attention. Listen to what he has to say, because this is the solution that's being presented. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've often had um, also the, uh, like the, the, the sort of a different conversation earlier today, actually, you know, about people who think, incorrectly well maybe correctly or depending on their experience right you know that financial advisors just take their money and don't do mm -hmm. anything with it, right so there's there's that stigma maybe of yeah. looking at it and and what do you do with that sort of a mindset and then say well i feel bad that you know that happened to you and it's uh um it shouldn't have and sometimes stuff happens that you didn't expect or uh even, you know, a waitress at a restaurant, a waiter at a restaurant, you know, maybe didn't treat you the best way, but others do. So, I mean, there's do you not go back around. to the restaurant just because of that one experience? Yeah. Oh. Right. Do you never eat again because yeah, I had a bad eat meal? Again because <laughs> yeah. Of that one. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, let's talk about it a little bit and yeah. see what, you know, see what goes on. And, and uh, yeah, so that's, there's all those kinds of things that we sort of have to, I don't want to say overcome is not the right the word is not the right word but well, would be way, more to it, become to come yeah, to an I've, agreement of yeah i think it is you know we have to overcome the feeling that we're coming to you with right like well i've had a bad experience i've been taken or the last person right. did this okay that is your experience that you had with the last person person right please park that at the door and come in open and willing yeah to hear what you have to say and if you come from a place of again that wisdom, that knowingness, and you come from that place of being open, ready to receive, you will feel not mm -hmm. just the, what you're saying, you will feel how you're saying it and whether it is someone you feel you can trust and that can serve you. But you can't come into you and ask for financial help when you're carrying the baggage of what's happened to you before. Right, 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 right. 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 And, and also we give people are I don't want to say necessarily shopping around, but mm -hmm. you say, you know, they talk to a variety of people in a variety of contexts. So, I mean, here, this is my job that I help people with their finances. We have a lot of systems in place that make sure things go correct. And, you know, we're not taking money and not giving it back. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of moving parts to kind of what we do. But so there's that. And, and we have licenses, all mm -hmm. kinds of credibility and stuff to do accountability that's accountability, the big one mm -hmm. all that stuff right exactly so now but somebody comes to us skeptical okay i get it but where do they go to get their validation of what they're looking for is their brother-in-law who's been broke for all his life you know or some youtube video or the guy doesn't know what he's talking about or all kinds of crazy things so yeah what you do what you do you know and just like i, I said before is we make suggestions, they make decisions. I, I can't be um, 
it's not the way I've looked at it. it took me a while to get over this. Frankly, this was a, a head spit. Um, what's it called? Head, head trash. Head. And mm -hmm. head stretch on my part to say, like, what did I do wrong when somebody yes. said go somewhere else? And I, I took me a while to get over that, um, to, to realize that, you know what, it's their life, not mine. I do what yeah. I can and they do what they're going to do. But it's yeah. also, um, are you both in the same vibe? Yeah. Right. And that's the thing is you want to be with someone that you resonate with. You're on the same frequency. Mm -hmm. Right. Because then you're truly hearing what that person says. And if it doesn't, then I'm not the person for you. And yeah. I wish you well, but you've planted the seeds and they will go looking for that right vibe type. Don't take that personally. Right. right. That's the thing in any business. You're going to get no's. The, the biggest industry that knows that is the is the movie, the, you know, the actors and the, the models oh. and the musicians. They've heard sure. no trillions of times oh, before they get a yes. And yeah. so never take no personally, because that no just means you're not connecting. But that doesn't mean the information wasn't important or isn't in there, isn't right? There. Because you want to work with people where, they, where you feel each other. Ah, I get you. I feel yeah. you. Because yeah. when you can say that, you're going to pay attention to what they have to say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I, I met a, I was good friends with a um, sales trainer who worked for IBM for quite a long time. And um and he used to say, used to say, he passed away a while ago. But in any case, he used to say that when you get a no, what a no means is, is means you're working. You're doing something. <laughs> well, because it's a, it could be a no, right, not right now. Or no, I need to mull yeah. it over. Or um, that's the thing we, the, one of the things that we need to have in any form of business. And the same, like, you know, your finances, you go to a bank and you get no for that loan right is right. that that door is closed that doesn't mean that there isn't an open door over here over here right you know right. and it'd be willing to keep exploring because there's a yes out there you've just got to look for it that's right that's right or had the or what did, what did we say earlier that the universe sometimes conspires yes to make that yes happen for you oh it does yeah. if we get out of our own way yeah 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 you know as, as they said as they said they they bring you the people that with the big arrows and the neon sign, come this way, and then and we go. But I don't know where to go. There's the neon sign, you know? right, 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 right. and then we get the cosmic two by four, and you know suddenly you're broke and you've lost everything, and now you really have got to pick yourself back up again. And it's like I should have paid attention. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole thing is slow down and pay attention, because in, to order uh, to un to understand what you are doing, as you said, there are so many different systems in place, the people at different levels of where they are in their life. And they may only come in at maybe just at one system and grow into another. But it's taking the time. I always say with these podcasts, listen, learn and apply. Mm -hmm. And that goes with any business. Listen to what this person has to say. Learn what they're teaching you. Now, how do you apply it? Mm -hmm. And if they speak to you, you can present all those uh, different levels for them according to where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the people have to be receptive in that whole way. I mean, it, all that education is really a two-way street. Yes. To get that happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing is that you're there to show them what they can do. But they're the people that have got to do it. To do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's right. We said we open the door, but they have yeah. to step through it. Exactly. So let's look at some of those systems. You know, somebody's in a financial crunch or somebody is just like tired of investing in all the wrong places. And of course, you know, what we see so much now is cryptocurrency and so many, you know, platforms out there. I've been caught. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, a friend talked me into it and, uh, and crash, <laughs> you know, fortune, just little drips and drabs. No big, I haven't got big numbers to think, but um you know, it's the next thing, it's going to be the next currency, and maybe one day we will have just no paper anymore. It will be um, digital currency. But in the meantime, you want to see your dollars kind of buried and rooting and growing. <laughs> For somebody that comes to you and goes, okay, I am tired of chasing the rabbit and the carrot, um, what's my next step? What would, uh, what would you advise for them? So the way we should go about um, the conversation with new client, new potential clients. Nobody's a client until they yeah. say yes and do what it's supposed to do. Uh, but we talk about 
first of all, it's like going to the doctor. Right. Okay. So you get a blood test and you do all kinds of the doctor looks at all the stuff and then says, OK, here's where you're at now. Now, what hurts? Mm -hmm. what, what do we do? What are we here for in the first place? Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of do that. So we kind of we have a whole system of collecting information about a person's financial life. And and we drill down into four major areas you know, of their life. So we talk about life insurance, um, which is a whole other story altogether about um I, I won't get into that story right now but we talk about life insurance retirement planning uh college planning for kids you might have or don't even have yet mm -hmm. and debt management and, and and then there's a bunch of spin-offs depending on what's going on with that particular family so we're looking at it as a holistic mm -hmm. picture and then we drill down into those four areas and then from those four things there may be spin-offs to go other places but those are the the things that comprise most people's financial life mm -hmm. and then we said okay now we got your this is your life your financial life on a couple of pages okay now where do you wh what thing in your financial life do you want to get kind of under control sooner than later so i would assume most of the time people come to you in debt <laughs> it's mostly debts most mostly debts and then okay great we'll kind of get that under control. And then where do you um, see yourself in, depending how old they are, five years from now, 10 years from now, where do you see yourself going in them? And sometimes they'll, they'll say whatever, they'll say whatever. And then I'll say, okay, so where do you really want to be in five or 10 years from mm -hmm. now? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, because um, sometimes they'll say in five years, you know, I'm going to be broken be homeless or something, you know, whatever, whatever they say. Um, that doesn't happen too often, but wrong the idea vibe, is, wrong vibe, wrong, vibe exactly. the wrong energy there. <laughs> right, right. And then we have a plan of what are we going to do now? What are we going to do in six months? What are we going to do later? And then we're constantly in that, uh, you know, follow up kind of um, making sure they're doing stuff. And so some, a lot of the things which a newer technology was not, not that new anymore. Um, we can make things automatic mm -hmm. and, Right. Rather than say, OK, you write a check to this person every month for fifty dollars and mail it. And, you know, that's the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but now everything is just really automatic. So the the more you can, the more we can set up to be automatic with people, the more likely you know, it, it can happen. You know? so yeah, the, 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 yeah. the thing about the automation is that it's so much easier. I, I live with a, a 90 year old who will not do anything online. And so she has to go to the bank to find out what payments have gone through and, and this and that. Whereas, you know, I have, I, I take all the household payments and just run it through. And then I'm seeing there is, there it is, my monthly payment. Da, 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 da. It's clear. I don't have to go to a bank and collect anything. Yes, yeah, yeah. Nobody takes checks anymore. <laughs> you know, right. Not here in Canada anyway. So, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, you set payments up and um, I find it easier because then it's, you're looking at the statement and it's all very, very clear instead of having to go to a bank to pick one up. So um, there are some great benefits into automation. And you also know X amount every month is going to go out of your bank, out of your paycheck, right? And so therefore, instead of looking at your paycheck as a whole, I've got the whole of this. Oh God, this payment, that payment, that payment. You know, X amount, say you get a thousand a month, 500 is going to go out. That leaves me 500. What am I going to do with that 500? What am I going to take out of that to invest mm -hmm. that will grow? How much do I need to live on? But look at your your money as from all bills paid, what you've got left, not from the other thing. And then you've got to pay the bills. And it, oh, God, it feels so heavy, right? So change the way you look at it. Yeah, we, we talk about all the time, talk about pay yourself first. And, yes, uh, yes. Right? Put, your, put money into savings or retirement or whatever the savings is, put that first, and then pay all the bills later and uh, not exactly like real later, but at yeah. least at least next in line. Mm -hmm. And you'll be amazed at how much, how, how all that stuff actually happens. Well, consider it a bill. Yeah. You yeah. know, that investment that you're making is part of your bills, you know, your yeah. money going out every month, you know, it's the same th approach that we take to nutrition, you know, Oh, I can't afford all those extra nutritions or organic food. Well, you just, you know, uh, you look at it as part of your food budget, whatever mm -hmm. nutrition you're buying is part of your food budget because it's there to fortify your health, right? That's so right. again, right. it's 
that shift of thinking. So how much do you have to do for people on getting them to shift their thoughts to actually see the simplicity of it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the, um, um, one of the best experiences I've had this, this, I guess the year that we're in, right? So earlier this year, maybe the year before, I had set up a retirement plan for a small company. And there was probably 20 employees or so. And we, and, and they, they didn't make a whole lot of money in the first place, the, the employees. But we set them up for $25 a week, $50 a month, something, you know, something rel in the scheme of things, relatively small. And, um, and they would, you know, moan and groan and said, I don't have 25 extra dollars, you know, every month. And I said, look, after a little bit back and forth, I said, look, let's go with, go with me for now. Um, for two, for two things. First of all, what we'll also do in that whole holistic view of stuff is we look at what people are actually spending every month. Mm -hmm. And most people don't keep track of mm -hmm. all the, you don't have to keep track right to the penny clearly, right. but you know, at least get a clue about what's going on. Um, but in any case, so we, we try to work on that. But then also, when they say I don't have $25 a week, um, we'll say, look, let's just go with it. If it really becomes a problem, we'll talk about it. But let's just go with it for now. And uh, they relent and put it. So they do it. Um, and then I go back to them several months later and say, you know, and here's the story. Went back several months later and said, how's that $25 working for you? And they said, eh, you know, it really wasn't that bad. actually." No, mm -hmm. So I said, okay, uh, now we'll make it 50. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't twist their arm too much, but mm -hmm. you know, they get, they're starting to get, they get it now. They're yes. starting to get it. There was a, a woman at this company I was talking about where I happened to be at their office uh, for something else. And I said, Hey, come on, come on. Let's, let's see how much money you've got. And frankly, I didn't even know, touch it, but without, but I knew there was more than she thought, and so I said, "Come on over." And she was putting in relatively small amounts. Um, now, this particular retirement plan, um, automatic, she puts in three percent of her pay, mm -hmm. which is a couple of dollars, and then the company matches that three percent automatically. So essentially, she's doubled her money Ooh. without even doing anything, right? right. And we have her in a, a pretty good investment that tends to grow a little bit. So I said, how much, how much money do you think you have here? And she said, eh, you know, probably four or $500 or something, whatever she said. So we go look up doo -doo -doo, and we check it on the screen with $900. Mm -hmm. And she goes, Oh my God, how did this, how did this ever happen? You know, I said, well, that's my job is to make this kind of stuff happen. Right. Right. You're and making the money work for her. Yeah. Other than her working, she's working for the money and you're taking X amount of money and making it work for her. For her. Exactly. Yeah. Put it right back in. And I said, good. This, how's this feel? So, oh, this is amazing. So, so good. Now, don't, don't keep this a secret. I mean, you got to okay. tell everybody here what, what happened here. Right. Right. So a couple other people came on board, but uh, it's still a, in the, as beginning investors, mm -hmm. the early twenties, their first job, mm -hmm. um, they not make a lot of money in the first place. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a tough thing to get ahead. Well, yeah. yeah, whether you're a family or you know so many single yeah. moms and things, and you think, well, yeah. you know, that's a meal going out every month, or that's you right. know, and it's like, okay, you know, again, look at it as a bill, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's like your hydro, like your rent, or like your this or that. It's a bill, and then forget you have it. And basic is a for saving that's multiplying while it's that's saving. Right. That's right. As simple as that. For saving, yeah. that's multiplying while it's saving. Yeah. And then you see that money grow. And, you know, that's really what we want to do. You know, like right. the orchard, <laughs> we want to see those trees grow and fortify. We want to see yeah. abundant fruit on those trees ready for picking, right? So it's not going to happen unless we're investing in the orchard. And if we're investing in the orchard, more apples are going there to grow. You go, there you go. And that's our job is to really – pick the right orchard for that particular person, how old they are and all kinds of other stuff that, that goes into play. So it doesn't matter whether they're a small player or a big player, or they could start off small. And then as they're making money and becoming more secure, yeah. because there's a certain thing about, as you start seeing money is actually working for me, mm -hmm. right? You go, well, you know what? I'm going to put money in it because I'm not going to see a bigger return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they feel more confident about it, but, it, uh, you know, energy attracts like energy and if you're feeling confident about the money right there's more money going to come to you in other ways in life that you can reinvest back yeah. it's it's the circle the cycle of life and the circle of go. life and it's like you're putting in 
and you're getting more abundance out. It's the same with our own energy, folks. When we put out energy and we give and share to others, the return is absolutely exuberant. Mm -hmm. So the same principle there, you know, when we're looking at money as energy, that energy is multiplying. Exactly. Exactly. That's so whether it's a little or a lot, right? So, I mean, I'm sure you've got people that have, you know, you've got people that, oh, you know what, I, I, I got a, uh, an investment here. Oh, I, you know, I've got, um, what do you call it when somebody leaves somebody in a will? <laughs> I've gone blank for a oh, moment. A bene the beneficiary. You beneficiary, mean? you know, yep. I've got some unexpected money. Oh, I see. Right. Yep. So instead of just spending it, which is what we're first thing we go, oh, I'm going to go and buy this. I'm going to go buy that. How about you take half of that and put it into something and then forget you have it mm -hmm. and let it grow. And then when you see how much it grows and you go, well, what if I put in a little more and then oh, see how yeah. that grows? Yeah. So that's the point, isn't it? You keep feeding the orchard and the orchard keeps producing. That's right. That's right. Even if there's a blight of insects come one year, <laughs> Don't cut down all the trees. They no, are, right? They'll weather the storm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's exactly right. You know, if we have a piggy bank, I'm just going to save money in my piggy bank. Forget I have it. You know, people do it with, you know, the, the toonies or the quarters. It used to be the cents. And then you, you'd have to get those rolls and roll up the money and oh, take yeah, it yeah, to yeah, the yeah. bank to see how much you've got. And you go, is that all? You yeah. know, I've been saving all year. But yes, you've also been dipping in there for this little expenditure and that little expenditure because it was there. And if it's somewhere out of your reach and you can't dip in, then it has more chance of working for you. Mm -hmm. And this is, would this be money that then people could still pull out if they needed to, or is this primarily for kind of like retirement or cottage, you know, co uh, college and things like well, that? Well, the intent <laughs> is for to use in the future, mm -hmm. whatever that future is. And if you take money out, which, some of my people do, you know, because they have what a, a perceived emergency or whatever the story is, right? There's penalties to pay. Not only do you lose the interest that you have earned or the growth portion of it, but on top of that, there's penalties also. So if, um, and that, so you're actually, you're saving more Right? The intent is to save more for later, but you're actually taking some money out. So now you have less than even when you started with. It would have been, you, would have, you would have been better off to put the money in the piggy bank and use it for money. Okay, in, so their, in, their, in their, their particular case, they're using the retirement account as a savings account. Right. And and then so it is primarily, I mean, when you say talk about for college, so then people take it out to pay for the college tuition. Oh, but that's they, okay. Yeah. All right, but um, somebody wants to take it out to buy their first home. Right. right. So but that's, are they going to lose all the interest they've made on that? It that pay required? It's that that's sort of it. It depends. So those those accounts are set up a little differently. But there there and there are some stipulations in some accounts that you can use things for other other purposes. Um and but not but not, you know. It's not across the board. It's, you're losing so, your money no matter what. So if it is for retirement, is there a set age on the retirement or is that retirement? Because the retirement button changes all the time. Right, and it depends exactly. where you are. Well, uh, and some people are forced to retire early for some circumstances. Do they then have to wait for a certain age or can that be adjusted? Or If there's disabilities and things, you can sort of take the money out. The magic age in the U.S., I don't know what it is in Canada, the magic age is 59 and a half. And so Why 59 and a half. <laughs> the politicians had to compromise somewhere, though that's what they came up with. Yeah, I think, so, I think we might be 65. I don't know. And in England, yeah. it's gone up to 70 now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's the that's the sort of the personal money is the 59 and a half in a social security year uh, kicks in for most people in their mid 60s, depending on how, how old they are. And right. So there's different stages where you go. So primarily what you're looking at this is you're setting up your retirement and you can't rely on the company you're with that says it has a retirement plan because the company goes bust or a company sells out and where does your retirement go? Oh. I know that my brother was a, a professor at a university and paid into re, you know retirement and over eight years, this particular person was stealing money from it. And when it came to it, 
he lost that eight years of oh retirement gosh. money and never got it back. Wow. And so when he came to retiring, that was eight years of his retirement money, less, which is quite significant when you're looking yes, at a pension, sure. right? Sure. So basically, you're securing your own retirement, whatever you may get That's from right. your business, you're securing your own retirement. And knowing because there's so many people in my age, I can't afford to retire. That's right. Right? All time. I have to keep on working until I drop dead because I don't have a good enough pension that can keep up with the expenditure of life. And mm -hmm. so, so how does it work then? Does it then pay out monthly dividends or do people take it out? Yeah, there's, lots of, there's kind of lots of options. So we have, there's um, the, the way we call it, a little, sometimes we'll call it a three-legged stool. You know, so, mm -hmm. so social security, that's kind of what you're describing with your brother, is the um, a, th a government sponsored retirement mm -hmm. plan. You put money in, your employer puts a little money in and grow allegedly grows, grows, grows. And then when you're at whatever age is appropriate for how old you are, um, then you start getting a monthly amount. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one leg. The other, uh, the other leg is company pensions because that's where you work at a company you put money in, the company puts money in, however it kind of set up. And then when retirement comes, which is determined by how that was set up in the first place, so it could be almost any age. And then, um, then, then the employee stops working, retires, and then there's generally a lot of options of how to take that money out, either all at once, a little at a time, for the rest of your life, for the rest of your life or longer, depending on what, what's going on. So that, that's another little a leg of the stool is pensions. And then the uh, third leg is really your personal savings. Mm -hmm. So that's what, with the, the young girl who I was talking about before. That's her personal savings now. So there's those three pieces you have to put into place. Um, no one leg will, the stool won't stand on one leg, let alone two or two legs, right? it just falls over. So you really need those three legs. Now, the problem is the pension part mm -hmm. where you're guaranteed that income for life based on the employer almost doesn't exist, at least mm -hmm. here in the US. Um, sometimes mostly labor unions, teachers, firemen, policemen, those kinds of people have that set up because it, you know, it was set up a long time ago. And um, the social security system is, definitely not enough for mm -hmm. people to live on, you know, no matter what. And it's something, something, you know, but it's generally not enough like you described. So you really got to have your own money put in there. And if you're not making much money in the first place mm -hmm. and, or you haven't started when you start, when you're 20, 25, right. You got a lot of time for that to grow. That's yeah. the good news. If you start when you're 40 or 45, you don't have a lot of time left. So, kind of yeah. so it's a whole mess of uh, of complicated. I'm not sure what what goes on and how the um, the systems are set up in the UK or Canada, but the um, I can't imagine it's a whole lot better. Than oh God! I mean, you know, I think we might have gone up a dollar or two with inflation, yeah. but you know, um, expenditure is up thirty percent. And, and yeah. of course, where I live, um, we're in the highest real estate. Yeah. in the whole country so pretty well for a pensioner like myself um 80 percent of my of my income would go off rent alone yeah exactly, exactly. And so we're seeing homelessness like crazy right now that's right, that's right and of course when you were young you don't think about age no not at all so you know this is something that kind of needs to be taught to our children or our grandchildren can a grandparent or a parent set up something like this for their children when they're young that in their name and put money into it every month? Sure. That is set up for their old age, starting them on that path. They can't touch it, that it's there just for their old age, but it's security. Because I know my generation, we're the hippie generation, right? A lot of the baby boomers, you know, we didn't think about uh, and, right. and of course, you know, people like me, which we talked about in making investments in things and then having it all stolen and, you know, being kicked to the curb, things like that happen in life, right? And then having to start all over again in your 60s and it's a little difficult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, life happens. Um, but can grandparents or parents 
invest uh, you know, uh, an account for their children if they're young? There is. Um, what happens most often is for college. So that's mm. a, it's kind of a standard thing. Each state um, has their own kind of setup. So they're purple, pretty similar. But the idea is um, the parent, at least here, the parent sets up the sa college savings plan for the children and then the grandparents can contribute to that. Mm -hmm. So at least you got that part going for you. Um, and then also you can always set up a an account on your own, put it in wherever investment you want to do it, but make the child the beneficiary of it. Mm, I so see. when you go, you can then, it would transfer. Now, if they go, if you go before the children are adults, you know, then and it's those parents, whoever the beneficiary is going to be. But that's all with a will and there's lots right. of other moving parts and stuff. But whatever you want to do, you know, think long and hard about, you know, whatever you want to do, we can sort of make it happen. But the other piece to remember is you got to take care, of, just like in the airplane, you know, mm, when the mask comes right. down, you got to mm. put it on yourself first, take yeah. care of yourself first, and then take care of others. Right. You know, um, again, retirement thing, um, you know, nobody thinks about when they're young. And of course, just, you know, just with the way life has gone, and, yeah. um, it, you know, not everybody, you know, kind of prepares for it or they've trusted their company. Right. And then yeah. realize, oh, I didn't get that much. I don't know how I'm going to live on this. Or, you know, that's simple inflation. I mean, yeah. everything is up 30% here. That is quite significant. Food, yes, gas, is. rent, everything that, you know, that is quite detriment for quite a lot of people. So the more and more we encourage um, you know, grandparents or parents to invest in the college thing. And if they don't go to college, can it transfer over oh, to a, a retirement? Absolutely. It can be, well, not necessarily retirement. It, it can get transferred to another person who can go to college. It's the, the stipulation here is that it has to be used for education. I'll say has to be used for education after high school. But it doesn't dictate what that education is. Like it has to be this university or that university. No, it could be because we're seeing, a, you know, post-education now happening in all realms. Somebody wants to go study dress design or something with somebody else. Yeah. It doesn't dictate it. Yeah. And, you know, that is, you know, a lot of the reason why a lot of people, I've, I've done shows on, on people who groom people to get into those big schools. And it's oh. not just a question of their grades. It's a lot to do with their character and their personality. And she, that she works with them, you know, from age of grade seven up to prepare to get into college. So an awful lot of people are looking at that extended, you know, different platforms of, of further education because they know even if they could get in, which is Ivy League, even if they could get in, um, the, could they afford it? Because you know, ed, right. post education is extraordinarily expensive in in many areas. So having that fund there for your children, knowing that there is something there that to give them that chance in life is something that's a great peace of mind for people. The um, the other piece that happens that I talk about too, and which um, happens somewhat, is we have well. When I have this conversation with parents, anyway, not the not the conversation with grandparents so much, but with parents, is is when your child is in tenth or eleventh grade and they're talking about college planning, that kind of stuff, right? Um, the first thing is there's no way, make it in a broad way, there's no way a a child should not go to after high school education because there's no money there's right. money everywhere to do something right mm -hmm. and here at least a lot of the community colleges which is a local two-year i don't know if they have those in canada um oh, yeah, a, another, yeah college and maybe called something else but it's a local two-year college after you know after high school and if the student has a pretty good grades i'm not sure what the cutoff is exactly they go for free mm -hmm. so they get this two years of college for free, literally, and then transfer to a, a four-year yes. school and graduate from. Yes. Nobody cares right, when you're applying anywhere. Nobody cares where you started college. There's no where you ended. Yeah. Right? It's and, kind of that, that, yeah. that um, buffer to, to kind of get your grades up so you can get into exactly. a, a bigger get university. Little, yeah. yeah. A little more maturity also. Right. And um, I also say that is the – so 
ki kids could do, I mean, there's a lot of, I have a current client who has got a unusual, oh, it's not, not that unusual story now that I think about it. But um, so the, the child was, you know, not, didn't have a whole lot of direction, relatively smart, but didn't have a whole lot of direction or didn't know what to do and like where to go to college and all that kind of stuff. And so what they did, not, not prompting for me at all, but we kind of talk about this, prompting for me is they marched him, both parents, marched him into a military service recruiter office and say, here's where you're going. And um, his kid sort of, I don't know if he was, in, he, I think he was sort of into it, then he wasn't into it. And I was in, but um, this week, this week is his graduation from an Air Force training camp. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, um, I applaud them for, you know, having the oomph to, to yeah. actually make that decision for him, instead of just letting him go and do whatever he wanted. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of the son for going and for them, the parents for you know, making that decision because they knew what was really best for him. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And well, I am going to put a little caveat there is that uh, and not everybody is cut out for that. Uh, but, I agree. I agree. But there are also many other things that aren't military that you can join as an apprentice um, and get schools. the training Absolutely. on a trade school yep. on, on many other type of things. Yes, so, exactly. you know, we used to see apprenticeship was really huge. And then it became all, uh, you know, Ivy League education, apprenticeship kind of went by the wayside and apprenticeships are coming back now. Yes. And so there are other ways. And I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for every year, kid taking a year off from high school for mm -hmm. post-education to kind of know who they are and what they want in life. My own daughter went back to school at 27. Oh. Uh, she, she had done um, a, a university beforehand and, and the, the budget wasn't there for her to go back, unfortunately. Um, and then at 27, she goes, no, I know what I really want to do now. And then she went back. And, and since then, of course, she's had two babies, built a house, and uh, she's had to do it all online. And finally, in March, she will fully graduate. And her, there you go. her job is, is saying, we're hiring you anyway. And you would just get more position and more money when the degree comes in because we see what you are. But I think sometimes the you know kids have to make their own discovery of what they want out of life. Sure. Um, but also when it comes to military, make sure that they have the right mentality or philosophy mm -hmm. around that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but yes, I think we, you know one of the things that, that we do see in society today is a lot of kids just flapping in the wind or floating. Uh, and they drift from one job to the other and everything feels meaningless and they, they don't have any connection to anything. And I think this is something that's really important that we help our kids um, say, yes, we want you to explore. We want you to be adventurous. We want you to try different things in life, but have a certain amount of structure that is security mm -hmm. that's giving you a chance for things to root, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because otherwise they'll carry on flapping. That's right. That's right. So it's unnecessary to have. So you've got the college fund, you've got the retirement fund. You know, is there any other type of fund they can have? Um, you know, if they are wanting to save up for a house or anything like this, is is that a category or is that just something that? I'd say it depends. Um, I guess it depends. I guess I suppose. Sure. It depends. When we say saving or investing, um, it depends how. What's the purpose of this money? Right. Right. So, and then depending on what the purpose is is where we would put it to have it grow or not grow. We mm -hmm. just want it stable. We just don't want it to go down. Right. Well, there's a whole other, um, another way to look at it. And um, so th that's, and that really depends on what they're looking for. And, and then the, you know, how much income there is and um, cash flow and all those kind of things. Uh, but one thing that is really important, well, actually two more things that are really, really important that many people over overlook is, is life insurance. Yes. It's like your whole thing. If mm -hmm. if you have two parents, most for the most part, you know, two parents who are paying the bills, you need both parents to pay the mortgage or the rent or whatever the story is. And something happens to one of them. Yeah. The one left behind is in a big trouble without a, a backstop of of some income to coming from something like life insurance. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, we don't um, you know, we don't pay attention to that until it happens. And that's right. That's, where, um, that's the problem. That's yeah, the problem. and I don't know. I know that in England they have death duties because I know when my dad died, it like took over half of the estate. It was just ridiculous back then. So I don't know what if, if there's death duties in in America I, or whatever. Yeah, I don't think so. It, we it, 
I think the here it's called um, estate taxes, mm -hmm. and the that is you need a lot of money for that to mm -hmm. kick in, like millions of dollars for that to kick in. So um, my mostly my clients don't have that those that amount of resources right. to right. deal with. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, basically, I mean, let's talk about people that are in debt. How does it help people that are in debt uh, get out of debt? You get out of debt. There's um, So the way we have a process called uh, debt stacking uh, and where are we doing the math, we just make a big list. Okay, here's your credit card and car loan and mortgage and, you know, all the things you actually owe as a debt. And we make a big list and we look at the the balance what do you owe if you're going to pay it off today right what's the interest rate you're paying on that and what is the uh, minimum payment to make okay okay so that we need those three numbers then we put it into our system and it will come out with the most optimal way to pay that list off so you pay the least amount of interest in the end mm. and and the way it works is if you can picture this you would put them in mostly in order of balance with the smallest balance first, regardless of the interest rate for the most part. And the the idea is if it's the smallest balance, it will get paid off first because it's the smallest amount you owe, right? And, then, and if you can put a little extra on there, fine. And then pay the minimums on all the other ones. Mm. So now when the first one is paid off and our system will give you the dates of all these kind of things. And once that first one is paid off, now you got a little extra money there. So add that as an additional payment to the next one mm -hmm. in the list. And now that's starting to be accelerated with additional payments. So if you follow one to the next to the next to the next to the next, um, you can be paid off significantly sooner than you would have if it was just not just paid the minimum out on all of them. But even if it was just random, I got a little extra, so $10 a year, $20 a year, you know, uh, that sort of thing. And um, it's amazing what, what people can come up with. And especially, I mean, we see people in their 20s and early 30s who have huge amounts of debts. Um, just because they didn't know what to do, then nobody ever taught them what to do in the first place. Right. And your interest rates are, you know, like here in Canada or in, the, in North America, you know, up and down, up and down. And, and we want to keep inflation down. So we're going to put the interest rates out. And then suddenly people's mortgages are higher. This is higher. Oh, that's yeah, higher. Yeah, yeah. And so it's it's like, how am I going to manage that? And so having something that's kind of consistent and secure is right. really, really important. And a plan. Mm. You know what you're going to do. and what you're going to who you're going to pay and how much each month yeah and just follow and again, the plan you make x amount of money and you know this amount of money is going to go out there every go. month forget about it you're right it, you know it's taken care of and now you've got this amount of money for your life expenditure your food your gas your life right and that's what all you have to work with and then you stay within that parameter but you know that all exactly. of that is being taken care of and so makes pe it can people do debt management and retirement at the same time? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes it's a hard <laughs> a mindset thing, but yes. you, know, you certainly can. Um, the other piece is once you follow the debt plan and pay, to pay things off sooner, it will give you the date when you'll be debt free. Mm. And now you've got, whoa, oh. we got a couple thousand yeah. dollars a month left over. Yes. Where's that going to go? Yeah. That's the retirement account. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, that's the thing we don't gain, you know, money takes on a life of its own and because we've given it that. And yes. instead of looking at it as an energy that wants to work for us, you know, we, we kind of become slaves to it yeah, one way sure. or the other. So having this money work for you, which is what your company does, it has it work for yep. you, whether it's debt, whether it's retirement, whether it's college, um, it's there to take care of business so that you can take care of life there you go that's right exactly right and now is this only in the states or is this everywhere in canada too actually our company is in canada also so just north america yeah and you can work with people in the states and canada or just in the states um the way our company is structured um, we're pretty much limited to the u.s um mm. but if we know someone in canada we can sort of make it happen but right. it's it's a bit of a difference there so right. pretty much strict stick to u.s people i think we're also in like guam and puerto rico or right. some other places too yeah but right Almost i don't know anybody now. in guam yet so, <laughs> I'll 
So the thing is, you know, 2024 is literally around the corner and everybody's overspent during Christmas. Um, everybody's looking at, God, things are just going to continue to go up. They're not going to go back. They're not going to go back. How can my money mindset be this 2024 where the money is working for me and that I am rooting and seeding, you know, those roots for the future that I can get out of debt or I can put the kids through college. And, you know, you don't have to be married and have kids. You can start that college fund, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Or the retirement one, most certainly, because if you, the earlier you start it, the more money there is there to retire later in life. Sure. And just look at it as part of your expenditure, right? It, this is just part of the bills that are going out. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then forget about it, right? That's the thing. It's X amount of cost every month for bills going out. And if you don't look at it as um, I'm paying this for that, this for that, oh God, I'm, should I pay that in this month? No, no, it's part of a bill. It's part of your electricity. <laughs> it's part of your that's energy right, that's, that's right. fueling your future. Um, and then what you've got is that peace of mind. Why do we take insurance out? Life insurance, car insurance, health insurance. Right. It is to be there in time of need. So right. retirement insurance. Right. Is something we don't think about. But if the earlier we think about it, the better it's going to be for us, because I can promise you, folks, I'm 69. No preparation for retirement at all. I invested in a technology that got stolen. So it left me bankrupt and starting again or trying to live off uh, the government pension sucks. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody in my position. So the earlier you can start. Please start, start securing for your old age. We're living longer than ever before. And we do not put us out to pasture because there's plenty more that we're here to do, but we need to be able to have the money in order to do it. Yeah, that's for so sure. let the money work for you so that you can keep on doing what you're here to do. So there that's the importance. So somebody wants to reach out and go, okay, I really don't know what I want or where I want to start, but I am intrigued and I want to start somewhere. How do they reach you and how do they um, start the conversation? So how would you put your my phone number and email and website in? Uh... Uh, your website and all of that will be there. But for the people there that are go. listening, please uh, tell them. Oh, so for, for those listening and have something to write with, right? uh, my phone number is 845-531-9000. Right. And my email is my name, Howard dot Gershman at Gmail. If you could spell the Gershman piece oh, sure. for people that are listening. Yep. G E R S H M A N. And uh, of course, they can go to uh, Prime America, Prime America um, dot com slash and then H G E R S. Sorry. And just do that again. Uh, uh, Primerica, which is P R I M E R I C A dot Correct. com slash forward H G E R S H M A N. Correct. And they can then go directly to your site. And Correct. you're on the H G E R S H M A N on LinkedIn and on livemore.net and on. Um, and on your Facebook, at your Facebook yeah. is your full name, Howard Gershman. That's and right. you've got a YouTube channel as well. You've got a there podcast go. of which I am on, um, which was delightful to be with you on. So how do people find you and uh, listen to, because you interview people that are out there living extraordinary lives and doing uh, wonderful things. So how do people find you on that? Yes. Yeah, so my, uh, my channel is called Howie's Hometown Heroes where we feature business owners, entrepreneurs, community members, and extraordinary people like Sarah, who are doing amazing <laughs> things in the world. And we just want to tell their story uh, mm. so they can get their voice heard in a lot of different places. It's we been, see, we see so do. much um, misery in the world. And, you know, I'm all about shifting that energy into the possibilities, you yeah. know, and all that is possible for us. And, you know, when we listen to people that, you know, they, they climbed that mountain and they fell down a few times, but they got back yeah. up and kept climbing. This, you know, inspiration begets invitation. You know that, yes, okay, you're going to go through challenges in life. You're going to fall on your backside. It's all about what did you learn to not do or to do and getting back up and moving forward. Just like the wind is constantly moving. 
the water and the current is moving. Our oxygen and our blood and our body is moving. Energy needs to move. So don't give up. Don't give in. Pick yourself up and just redirect. And if you're in financial trouble or if you just are so overwhelmed with all the interest rates and everything going up, if you're looking at, I, will, I don't know how to put money aside for retirement because, you know, like I'm just trying to make ends meet right now or kids go to college. I won't be able to afford college by the time they get there. All of these questions that a big balloon of anxiety right now, yes, they can all, that balloon can be popped, right? And once you talk to Howard and you have that conversation, where do I start? What do I need to do? Can I cover all of them? And step by step. And then once you set things in motion, you can sit back and get on with life and then get on right. doing what you're meant to be doing because the money's working for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us here today and sharing. Um, you know, this is it has come out at Christmas, but it really is definitely one that people need to listen and, and learn and apply and look at. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought about the money. Or all I know is the anxiety of the money. Or I'm too busy making the money. I forgot about the money waking for me. And go. so start the conversation with Howard. Dip your toe in. Maybe it's only seeding yep. initially, but you know, where do you start? And you start with the conversation. And, and it's uh, all about education and understanding all the, the some of the moving parts of how money works. Right. You don't even have to know all of them, just a few. Yeah. And then you build on each step until you get where you're going. It changed your life. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, you were in a rut. You were climbing down the mountain instead of going up. And it put you on a trajectory that became so inspiring. You were so inspired by it, you were invited to do yeah. it yourself and I make it a difference for other people. There's exactly. always a solution, folks. Always a solution. We've just got to be willing to listen, learn, listen and apply. Because right. when we do, then we go, oh, that is one burden I can take off my shoulders. Yeah, that's right. right. So thanks so much for being with us here today, Howard. Uh, to everyone out there, have a wonderful Christmas. If you're listening to us every Christmas, if it's New Year, look at your money situation. What are you going to do about it? Because it's time to make sure that it's working for you. So you can get out there and do what you're meant to do. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. There are so many more for you here on selfdiscoverywisdom.com. Just go to the podcast tag at the top there and you will see all the many genres and all 3,000 shows ready for your listening. We are here to serve you, to help you on your journey of life. And we know that through inspiration, it begets invitation. We are supported by you, the listeners, and those that we interview. Anything that you can spare us in donation would be greatly accepted. And we do hope that you enjoy the next show.